What's going on, folks? Welcome to another exciting episode of Strong Arm Sports. I'm K Spade, the prospect. I'm your boy, the past 57, and together we form Strong Arm Sports. Let's yes, go! Sir. Got a great show for you guys today, man. Unfortunately, I kind of want to start today's show off on, on kind of a somber note. Um, <laughs> right now, we're only bringing you guys one episode a week, except for last week where we brought you two episodes. But I know at this point it's kind of old news, but we do definitely want to talk about the passing of Stuart Scott. I'm sure at this point definitely. everybody knows about it. But, um, you know, Stuart Scott had a, a rare form of cancer that he actually fought uh, on three different bouts. And, and it eventually, uh, you know, took his life. And, and it's, a, it's a really sad story. It had your boy in his feelings because the day that Stuart Scott passed was the day that my family buried my cousin who also passed away of cancer. So it was tough on your boy, man. But Stuart Scott definitely, he changed the game. And I don't have to say this stuff at this point. It's all been said. But uh, LaParis and myself, we got this show right here and we can come up here and talk like we talking right now. We don't have to come up here and try to talk corporate. We don't have to come up here and be somebody we're not. And we owe That's a lot right. of that to Stuart Scott. You know, he, That's right. he definitely found a way to be professional, to be informative, and at the same time to be 100% Stuart Scott through it all. So, you know, definitely, man, he's going to be missed. He, he was a big guy in this, in this business. The Stuart Scott, the Stuart Scott passing really touched me too, man. I, I was telling you earlier in the week that I kind of got emotional too, but I really wasn't expecting, you know, to be like that. But I felt like I grew up with Stuart Scott. I mean, when I first started watching sports, and I mean, Stuart Scott been there for like almost 25 years. I think 23 years to be exact. And, you know, me being 32, that's like around when I was like 10 or something when Stuart Scott touched down at ESPN. And I I remember waking up, going to school, and instead of watching cartoons like normal people would watch before they go to school, I would turn on Sports Center. And watch the yep. rerun that, you know, Stuart Scott used to be on at 11 o'clock at night. But I couldn't watch that one because I was in bed. So they are rerun it at like 7 in the morning. and 6 in the morning. And I would get up and I would watch that before I went to school. Me so too, it's bro. like Stuart Scott was a part of my life for like 20-something years. So, I mean, he bought, and I hate to say it, but swag. You know, it's all been said already. He bought all the swag, all the charisma. You know, you know, with his little key phrases, his little words, his, you know, booyah and all that. He brought all that to sports commentating, man. He really did. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to just tell Stuart Scott, thank you. You know what I mean? You will definitely, definitely be missed, man. He was really one of my favorite guys to watch on TV. Definitely. And before we move on, hold up. And yeah, oh, before you wanna we move go? on, okay. I also want to say, man, you know, uh, I, I ain't going to go too deep. But shout out to my cousin, man. We love you. Yeah, we miss you. Definitely. And I just want to let people know, you know, cancer take people every day. You know, people was That's was, right, man. was angry with cancer when Stuart Scott got taken. But unfortunately, cancer take people that we don't even, you know, you guys don't even know, regular people. You know, my cousin wasn't That's right, man. A, a, a famous person, but, you know, her life was just as important to a lot of people. So, man, you know, cancer right, sucks. Man. But all right, bro, let's, let's right. get on some happier stuff. Let's move forward. What else we got, man? So you know where I want to go. I want to go to the NFL Divisional Round. So let's talk about Baltimore Ravens versus New England. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the Dallas Cowboys versus the Green Bay Packers. I mean, there's a lot of games going on this, this weekend. We also got the Panthers versus Seattle. We also got the Broncos versus... Who is the Broncos playing? The Colts. They're playing the Colts. I mean, we got yeah, a lot of know. games to talk about. I want to know what game are you most excited to see? What game excites um, you this weekend? I don't know. Uh, I think for me, I'm, I hate to say it, but I'm probably going to go Colts, Broncos. Because to me, really? to me, that's the only game I don't feel like I know the outcome on. I feel like the oh. other three games, I, I think I got them figured out. That's the only game that... Go ahead. Go, I mean, I was going to say, do you want to give us the outcome? <laughs> since the yeah. outcomes are... Since you already know. I mean, I got Flacco going down as much as I hate to admit it. I got Cam going down. And as much okay. as you not going to dig it, I got the Cowboys going down. But I, I don't know. I, I don't know what I got in this game. I don't know. Okay. Because, you know, we, we both have seen Peyton and, and, the, and the Denver squad just come out and look like they not quite 
yeah. there. So yeah, the, if they the don't past come couple out weeks right. at the end of the season, they yeah, man, the past couple se- um games at the end of the season, they came out flat. You're absolutely look right. right about that. You're absolutely so that, right about that's that. the game that I definitely. I mean, you know how we do. We're gonna watch them all, but I, I'm gonna definitely have my eye on that one. Is it one in particular that sticks out for you? Well, well, you already know. I'm, you know, cow the cowboy game. The Cowboy game. The can, can Cowboys we get going, going. We ain't, we haven't been in the playoff game in Lambo since the Ice Bowl. So, you know, we need we need redemption. Bart Starr and them, they, they, you know, they they did the quarterback sneak and they beat us back then. We need to get redemption right here and we need to win this game to move on. Now, then before we go, before we move on, a lot of people. I want the game. I really really got my eye on is Cam Newton, the Panthers versus. The Seahawks. Now, for whatever reason, the Carolina Panthers seem to have figured out defense again. Like, they are playing. The past couple of weeks for them to get that extra push to the playoffs, the defense have been playing amazing. So, I want to say that they figured out defense again. And, you know, Russell Wilson, really, they don't have that stud wide receiver that Carolina really got to deal with. You know, all they got to really worry about. Now, it's a big task. They got to worry about beast mode because Marshawn Lynch, it's bound to go ham out there if you let him. You know what I mean? He'll make you look stupid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's really the game that I really have well, my eye on. The Panthers, Panthers versus Seahawks. I don't Seahawks. know, bro. I don't know. Because, you know, Whoa. Here, late, Whoa. here lately, Russell's been been scatting a lot. Like, you are at, you are right, Russell man. has right. scatted more here recently than I can remember him. I mean, he's always been mobile. But he was one of those guys that would just move around to keep the play going. But here lately... Russell getting somewhere. I mean, he would take what the about, hell off. What about Cam, though? What about Cam? That's true, but I just, I, I mean, I don't know, man. I just don't trust what Cam has around him. And, and you know, it's I mean, unfortunate. Yeah, we, I'm a Cam fan, but I, mm-hmm. I don't trust those guys. I just don't trust them. Yeah, we we talked about that earlier in SAS, definitely. So I, I agree with you with that. But I, and I, I root for Cam because, like, like you said, I'm a Cam fan as well. And I just want to see Cam do well. But, you know, I think one of the other guys, one of his other wide receivers, Philly Brown, I think he's injured. I don't think he's going to play. So I just want to – I think the defense for the Carolina Panthers is key. If they able to at least keep the game close and Cam don't come out there making mistakes against Seattle defense, I think that could be a game where we could be calling for an upset. Where we could hey. be calling for an upset. I'm not saying it's happening. It could it, it, be. That sounds dope. That sounds dope. It could be. So hopefully we have we to got? wait and see how that pan out. But we moving forward. I want to talk about. Let's can we? We gonna be all over the place for this episode. Can I be all over the place? Let's, hey, let's talk about it. some. Let's just, let's all right, just let's get it. Back. Let's talk about some NBA trades that happened this past week. I mean, Ooh. the NBA is wide open with trades. So for starters, the Knicks, OKC, and the Cavs made a three-way trade. So the Knicks traded J.R. Smith, let me get it right, J.R. Smith and Iman Shumpert to the Cavaliers. Waiters went to OKC, and I think, I, I, who did they send back to the Knicks? A bag of Funyuns? They, they want, the Knicks wanted Reggie Jackson in the right. trade. And right. OKC was like, no, sir. Reggie Jackson what? is still in OKC, champ. Yes. But I, I saw I saw the reports. It was reports. No, out that sir. The deal was done. No, sir. See, that's how it was supposed to go down. But you know, I think OKC flexed on him and was like, "Yo, if you want, if you want Jr. out of New York, we're not giving you back Reggie ja- Reggie Jackson." So they did not get Reggie Jackson. I thought he was there too, but Reggie Jackson did not get traded. But that doesn't See, mean this that is Reggie why Jackson I tune in because I legit didn't know that. The, the last yeah, report so- I saw had Reggie going to the Knicks. And I, you know, yeah. it's crazy. Now that you say it, I've watched the Knicks. I watched the Knicks Rockets game and didn't see him, but I didn't think about yeah, it. Yeah, he because he, he didn't even go. He he didn't even go because they wow. flexed. OKC flexed on him, but that doesn't mean Reggie Jackson isn't on the block. I still think, and you know, the experts. I'm doing the quote fingers here. The experts still think that OKC will be trying to move Reggie Jackson before the trade deadline. But you know, I, I think I think the Knicks are just trying to get picks. But the, the Knicks look. Horrible, horrible. What is wrong with the Knicks? But they, they ended up even waving Samuel Dallenberg, who was supposed to be part of that trade. Nobody wanted Samuel Dallenberg, so they just waved him. But before you even talk about all this that happened, let me tell you some more trades that happened. Cavs there's traded more? for Timothy. There's more. 
Cavs traded for Timothy Timothy Mozgov for two protected 2015 first round picks with the Denver Nuggets. Also, I'm not done yet, Speed. There's more. <laughs> There's more. The Celtics are in trade talk with the with the Memphis Grizzlies to send Jeff Green to Memphis for Tayshaun Prince expiring $7.7 million contract. And also, the Pelicans jumped in that to be a third team in that trade to send Austin Rivers to the Celtics. But wait, there's more. The Celtics don't even want Austin Rivers. They said, <laughs> <laughs> they said, hold up, we're going to put wait. you on the jet. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, go so ahead. So is Boston doing a complete roster dump? Yeah, they they said they're gonna build. They saying they're gonna do the OKC. They're gonna build through the draft, and they, they pretty much chalking this season. This season is chalked. It's okay, chalked. So what it's happened to Austin Rivers? So, Austin, um, the Pelicans jumped in the trade to send Austin Rivers as a you know the, as a third team trade to the Celtics. The Celtics said, "No, sir, we don't want you either." They said, "We're gonna put you on a jet to LA." They're going to send Austin Rivers to L.A. to play for his father, Doc Rivers, for in exchange for some draft picks. What is going on in the NBA, Spade? Man, I'm going to tell you. Uh, I, I like trades. I do. Yeah. When they make sense. And everybody kept saying to me, Deion Waiters for J.R. Smith doesn't make any sense. Waiters for mm -hmm. J.R. Smith doesn't make any sense. And I continue to tell people. I don't think the Cavaliers picked up the phone and called the Knicks and say, what we got to give you to get JR? I don't think that's mm -hmm. how it went down. I think their their target was Iman Shumper. And I think the Knicks mm -hmm. was like, yo, how about you take him too and get mm -hmm. him up out of here? Let's dump that roster and let's get rid of that headache and let him tie the shoes or untie the shoes of opposing players for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not it makes the Cavaliers better, I don't know that it could hurt because Jr. and, and Dion do kind of have some similarities. But Iman Shumpert is a pretty good perimeter defender that's got to help the team, right? I, I agree with that. But let me tell you who, as far as the moves that the Cavs make, let me tell you the move that I like. I like them getting Timothy Mozgov. Like, I'm right. not saying he's an, he's an elite center or anything like that. But Tim, Timothy Mozgov is a solid big defender. He's a legitimate seven feet tall. You know, he's a seven-footer, legitimately. Like, you know, some people would be like, you know, he's 6'10", and they'll list him at seven feet. He's not right. that. That dude is seven seven feet tall. And, I mean, when even when he was with Denver, he averaged eight points, eight rebounds in, in limited minutes. And we already know the bigs that the Denver Nuggets have. So, I think Timothy Mozgov is definitely an upgrade over Verizon. I'm, well, Verizon I'm say hurt, it. I, but I, I'm pretty sure if Verizon comes back, that's his job. I mean, he, he uh, Verizon has I don't more think so, of I, an actually, offensive I skill set than Mozgov. I would prefer to have Mozgov in there. You know, do, over do, Verizon? Do, yes, man. I think he's a. I think he's a better defender. When you got LeBron now, Jr. Kyrie, do you really need more offense? You need some defense. You need some rebounds. That's what you really need. Le, I know LeBron is hurt. You you know you got Tristan off the bench. You got now you got legitimate size there. With I think Verrajal was out for the, for the season, but moving forward, you know now you got kind of a you got Mozgov, Verrajal, Tristan Thompson. You really got some size in the East with you know where teams are limited with size. Now I think you can compete better, in my opinion. Don't forget they have Kevin Love. So do you really need Verrajal scoring? In my opinion, well, I think they need defense. Well, you kind of do because, I mean, to be honest, Verizal, he got a little more dog in him than Kevin Love. Verizal, he's a little more nasty. He can he can yeah. get some garbage points. Kevin Love yeah. is getting to that point where he don't really like it down there in that paint. He don't, he don't like getting dirt under his fingernails. Yeah, but I, I'm going to tell you this. I, I see what you say, and I agree. Uh, it's one thing I got to say to throw into the equation. Again, man, the Cavaliers are learning the hard way. You can't just throw a bunch of players together, and it works. I That's mean, right, man. That's true. It, it still might not work. They, they definitely got some chemistry issues out there. And at times, even with LeBron, the Cavaliers look bad. I'm just going to be honest. They do. The Cavaliers look bad at times. That's not to say they can't get it together. It's still plenty of, of time. You know, we're not even at the halfway point yet. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it's a lot of time. But that team doesn't look good. And, and sometimes 
the thing to do is to not mess with anything and let these guys jail. And I feel like they're pulling the trigger on some deals. They're moving a lot of people, and they're moving them kind of quick. So only time will tell whether or not these, these uh, moves will help. So let me ask you one more question pertaining to trades. Because one more trade I want to talk about that didn't happen yet, but he's definitely on the block, was Lance Stevenson. We ain't going to talk about that yet, but he's definitely on the clock. We have to wait and see where he go. But let me ask you a question real quick. Out of the trades that I just told you about, potentially Jeff Green going to Memphis, you know, the, what the Knicks, OKC, and the Cavs did, who do you think got the better the better of that trade? Or, mm. you know, I, me. let me let me start while you think about it. Because I already know okay, why I'm go going. Ahead. I want to go with OKC. First of all, they was able to keep Reggie Jackson for now. Maybe they can get a better. Which maybe they kept Reggie. Ja- say, it, say it again. I said that's dope because Reggie Jackson played big during some injuries yeah, for their two big stars. He, he did. So they was able to keep him for now and maybe maybe be able to move him for a better piece at a later date. But I think with Westbrook, Waiters, and um, KD, it's like pick your poison. Then you got... Um, then you got Ibaka there with, you know, getting blocks, getting rebounds. I, I wish they could have got Kendrick Perkins out of there because that contract is just crazy. And Kendrick Perkins is getting paid just for veteran leadership when I think they can get a better a better piece for what they paying Kendrick Perkins. But I want to say that, in my opinion, I think OKC got the best of the trades that I just announced right there so far. So far. We have to wait and see what happens, though. I, I honestly don't know, man. I mean, because <laughs> I'm I'm telling you, I honestly, at some point, I, I think all teams involved took a gamble. Now, I didn't know the Knicks mm-hmm. didn't get Reggie until now. So, yeah, you know, the Knicks, if, if they getting picks and they dumping salary, I get it. The whole thing with Dallin Bear, I don't think it was necessarily that nobody wanted him, but he was about to get $4 million. Nobody wanted to give him that. So, I mean, he yeah, got waived. You know, they had to pay him like 1.8. Somebody would probably pick him up for a lower amount, just like you said, because of his height. Uh, but yeah. I, all of these are experiments. And to be honest with you, each one of these experiments could blow up. I know what OKC was thinking. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people saying, well, it's, it's not enough ball to go around for Russell, for KD, and for Dion. But at the same time, yeah. once upon a time, that team, and I know he, he did a lot of coming off the bench, but once upon a time, it was Russell, James Harden, and Kevin Durant. And they look pretty damn right. good out there. So if That's Dion a good can, point. Can, can come into that role, that could be a great experiment. But again, you just don't know. And, and you don't know, like, James Harden at the point that he was okay coming off the bench. He was, he was that mm. guy that he came in with the second – Line up and, and, and he balled out. Yeah. I don't know if Dion mentally wants to do that. So, I don't know, man. Only time will tell. I think they, they are all some, some experiments. I, we have to wait and see how everything work out. But, I mean, the NBA season has been exciting with all this going on this early in the season. It's crazy. Indeed. But let's get out of the NBA. Let, let's, go to, okay. let's go talk about some NCAA football. Can we do that? Okay, okay I'm with that. Let's go. All right, so I want to talk about Kenny Hill. Kenny Hill, the uh-huh. quarterback of Texas A&M Aggies, kind of, uh, mm-hmm. once was. Uh, mm-hmm. He, he want to leave. And, and they granted his request to um, transfer. And they're saying that the school heading his, his list, the team on the top is TCU. Now, of course, if he goes to TCU, he has to sit out a year. But, I mean, this guy didn't have a bad season. He did get into some trouble. He got suspended for a couple of games. And during that time, uh, the freshman, what's his name, Kyle, Kyle Allen, came in yeah. and, and looked pretty good. But the coaching staff, Sumlin and the crew, came out and basically said that even if it wasn't for the suspension, that the freshman was going to get the job. Because Kenny Hill came out and, and looked great in the beginning. And then the team kind of slowed down and got a little stagnant. And they dropped like three or five or something like that in a stretch. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, around that time he got in trouble got the cannon bang but what, what do you think about this guy possibly going to tcu i mean that could be that could be crazy man I, it's not man man i didn't that know that crazy. tcu was one of the teams what is wow team, why why would they why would they allow him to go there why would you allow him to go there I, man i mean how, if i how could you block him if, i mean if he wants to transfer it, man transfer. i remember i i Forgive me, but I didn't know that uh, I didn't know that they had a list. 
But I remember a couple of years ago, there was a QB that wanted to get traded. Not traded, excuse me. That wanted to transfer. They want, He wanted to transfer. Can't remember the kid name. It's slipping my mind. I apologize for this. But he wanted to transfer. And they said, you can go to any team in the nation, but they cannot be in this conference. That's exactly what I would have told that guy. I would have told Kenny Trail. That's what they call him, Kenny Trail. And see, this is when I think, you know, he kind of got kind of big headed early in the year, and I kind of think that hurt the kid. But it did. I, I definitely wouldn't have let this. I wouldn't let this guy go to TCU. I send that guy to Nebraska. I mean, not even Nebraska to the to the Pac-12 or somewhere. I definitely wouldn't let him go to TCU. But all jokes aside, if you want to leave, let him out of his contract. You want to transfer, want to get out of there because the coach the coach want to go in a different direction. There's no need for him to sit behind this guy if he's not going to play. So I'm especially definitely in favor of this guy. Yeah, especially. I mean, if you're an upperclassman so, sitting behind a freshman, you might as well dip. You might as well. You might as well. But I think Kenny Trill could probably get it together. It's, you know, it, it may help him that he might have to sit out, you know, only way he won't be able to sit out is if he go to a, a lower a lower um division school, like a division one double A or division two school, which he probably not gonna do. Cause he got all this publicity around him, so he probably want to go to a Division One school. But it might help him sitting out of here. So if he transfer, he may need that. He may need that. Got a big game Moving coming forward. up, right? Yeah, definitely. Moving forward, we can talk about the national championship game. We have Oregon versus Ohio State. Also, before we talk about the game, Spade, something happened this week, bruh. So why was? Wide receiver from the Oregon Ducks named Darren Carrigan was ruled ineligible. Allegedly, he failed the drug test. I think it was marijuana, a pot, or something. Now, that's the guy that, that kind of he showed out in the last game. This is what I'm, man, I was kind of getting a little, you know, a little emotional over here because he murdered the Florida State Seminoles. He probably was high. <laughs> he probably oh was high. Oh, my God. Oh, my but he God. Kicked, he definitely killed us out there, man, and played an amazing game. But he was ruled ineligible for using, testing positive for marijuana, man. Now, that may or may not hurt the Ducks because, I mean, they stack at the wide receiver position. They always have a lot of speed and talent surrounding Mariota. So we have to wait and see if that is going to hurt, hurt, hurt them or if that will help Ohio State. Because Ohio State looked prime and ready for prime time. So we have to wait and see. Who, who do you have in the game? Who do you have? Well, you know, I put a lot of thought in this. And, and I think I still got Oregon. Now, let me let me give you a little bit of reasoning, you know, as to how I got here. So here's the thing. Okay. At first, I was worried because I said, wait a minute now. You know, Oregon don't have a, a top-ranked defense. I think their defense might be ranked, like, in the hundreds. And Ow. we saw... We saw Ohio State run the ball straight down the throats of the Alabama Crimson Tide defense, and that's a yes, really did. good defense. So I said, you know what? Ohio State going to pound the rock, and I don't know that Oregon can stop them. I don't think they can stop them, and I still don't. But on the flip side, when I looked at it, uh, Alabama, they did a great job of taking Amari Cooper away, and that's kind of the did. weapon for Alabama. Like, mm -hmm. And with that being said, Blake Sims – Still threw three interceptions, and they lost by one score. So then mm -hmm. when you flip the equation and look at it, Oregon has a way more potent offense than Alabama and more than one weapon. So I don't know that that strategy of taking away one person will work. And I also don't think that Mariota would make the mistakes that Sims made. So you, you take that offense and you take away the three INTs, I don't know, man. I just I think in the end, offense is going to be the, the name of the game out here. And, yeah, Ohio State can run the ball. They run it good, and they're going to run it. But yeah. zipping that ball down the field puts points on the board pretty fast, and it gets the defense back on the field before they get the rest. I got Oregon. And let me – you just said something right there. You said they zip the ball down the field real fast. See, the experts – you know, well, I want to, you know, the people that they say are the experts, they always say if Ohio State control the time of possession, they will win. How? When Oregon runs 10, the Oregon runs plays in 10 seconds. 
They can go yep. 90 in like a minute and 20. So, Tom, I don't think Tom, you know, usually things like that works for like guys like Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning really, he's trying to do all that, uh, you know, changing at the line of scrimmage and all that. All that, that may Omaha, work against Omaha. guys like, yeah, man, that may work against guys like Peyton Manning. But in this Oregon offense, when they're running 10 plays a second, they can literally go 90 in a minute and 20. So if they score 14 in 2 minutes and 40, it, what what does it matter if Ohio State had the ball for 10 minutes and they had it for 2 40. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I, because I don't the, think the problem puts, with that theory is a per, you can a team can only control the tempo when they have the ball. That's right. So they can that's slow right. grind down that field all they want. But when they kick it off, Oregon going to walk right down there and score. So <laughs> I, know, I could be wrong, man. Ohio State might really come out here and, and, and run the ball and, and pound the ball. I just don't think they can slow down that, that potent offense, man. So it sounds like you're saying the same thing I'm saying. Yeah, I'm going to pick Oregon, and I kind of wanted to go Ohio State, but just sitting here thinking about it when you said they zipped that ball down the field, I said, you know what? Time of possession do not matter in this game. It's not nope. going to matter. It's not going to matter. And that right here on SAS, I just changed my pick. I was going to go Ohio State. Spade kind of persuaded me subconsciously. He didn't even know. He, 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 he persuaded me subconsciously, and I want to change my pick. I'm going to go Oregon because time of possession is not going to matter during this game. It's not. It's not. I, don't I mean, that's so. all I have on the national championship game. If we're ready to move forward, we can move forward. Yeah, uh, speaking of the national championship game, of course, we just said Ohio State is in this game. But we got a little bit of news out of Ohio State. So as okay. we told you guys on the last week, the quarterback running this team, Cardell, isn't that his name? Cardell? Yeah, yeah, that's his Okay, name. so this guy's the third-string quarterback. May or may not was supposed to be the third-string quarterback. But at any mm-hmm. rate, we've seen this team be piloted by two other guys. And with mm-hmm. the success of this guy right here, you got not one but both of those guys contemplating transfers. Uh, that's right. I mean, what are we going to do? Uh, Braxton Miller's saying that he's probably going to leave. JT Barrett's probably going to leave. Um I don't know, man. You feel like these kids should leave, or, uh, or should they hang I mean, around? But, like, like you said, and it's, it's the same thing with Kenny, with Kenny Hill. You, you know, this freshman guy, Urban Meyer, actually came out this week and he said that that Cardell, Cardell Jones actually wasn't the third string quarterback. He actually was the second string quarterback, but due to injury, he had to get bumped down. That's how Barry actually became the second string quarterback. Now we all know that Braxton Miller was, excuse me. He was supposed to be the starter. He ended well. He was the starter. He did get injured again. But they talking about Braxton Miller actually transferring to LSU. And LSU because because he graduated, he do not have to sit out a year. It's kind of like the Russell. I call it the Russell Wilson law because Russell Wilson kind of did the same thing when he went from West. I mean, not Wisconsin, from NC State to Wisconsin. So right. if Braxton Miller was to transfer, he wouldn't even have to sit out a year. He can go right in and be the starting quarterback of the um, LSU Tigers. But as far as Barrett, I mean, Barrett actually played well, so I'm pretty sure he can probably transfer anywhere he want to go to as well. But like I said, he would have to sit out a year. My question to you is would you, if you was Barrett, would you stay and compete or would you be out? Well, I would stay, and I'm going to tell you why I would stay. For one, I don't want to sit a year and not play football. That's one. Okay. But for two, okay. like you just said, he was the third-string quarterback, but he got an opportunity because of injury. Injury. Who's to say right. that that won't – you know what I'm saying? Like, you never know. And I'm not saying sit back and hope the guy get injured. Of course, that's not what I'm saying, but okay. anything can happen. And, and JT Barrett will feel crazy as hell if he transfers. He's sitting, and he watch Cardell goes down with an injury and watch somebody else get into that – you know, get into that starting spot right. and carry that team. He'll be sitting there thinking, right. geez, I'm over here sitting in the dorm room playing 2K, and I could be that guy. You know what I'm saying? So, first of all, Absolutely it's a possibility right. he could beat them out. And for two, man, from week to week, you never know, man. We see players get hurt in practice. Some guys don't even make it to the field. So, uh, I, right. I wouldn't leave. If, I, now if, I'm, if I'm Miller, I'm out. But if I'm Barrett, no, I'm not leaving. I agree with you, 100%. Moving forward, we got some MMA news. Something happened in MMA this past week with the John Jones with John Jones, and I'm not talking about the fight. <laughs> so uh. John Jones 
entered a rehab this past week after the fight with Daniel Cormier. He entered a rehab for cocaine. Oh my gosh, cocaine. Well, wait, well, wait. wait, you kind of left out a very important detail in that. Okay, he was what did I leave drug out? tested and failed a drug test. So and then exactly. he put himself in rehab. And I'm gonna tell you something smoke. that I saw. I, I, I okay. saw somebody say something that I agreed with. It, it wasn't a random drug test. It, it was a known drug test that was on the way. And I, I was just as blown by it as everybody else. But I heard somebody say, when, when you fail a drug test that you knew was coming, you seriously have a problem. And, I you agree. know, this, this might be very serious. You know what I'm saying? This ain't just somebody who, you know, rolling up the blunt. I'm not saying that that's okay. But this ain't that. This is cocaine. Mm. This cocaine. is I'm in love with the coca, and I ain't you know on the other end of yeah, it, not man. selling it. So yeah, I mean, the man. question I got for you is, does cocaine give you a competitive advantage? Like, am I the I mean, only I one was, shocked that he didn't lose the belt? I would think so. I would think it's a competitive advantage. Not, I don't want to fight no crackhead. Me neither. You know, <laughs> man. I want to say I I th I don't know. Let me just put that out there. First, I don't know, but if I would any think cocaine that if, users watching the show, are you guys stronger or faster when you own it? Just put it in the comments. I, I want to say that they probably don't feel as much pain as a person that's not on it. So if you getting punched in the face, if you getting punched in the face or kicked somewhere, I would think if you're on some type of substance like cocaine, it would n maybe numb your body and you don't feel it like the other person that's sober. So I would think that well, they have some type of competitive advantage. I don't know. I mean, and this is a good thing that we don't know because we don't do cocaine. We don't know that's about right. cocaine. That's right, true. But I'm thinking, true. even if it, even if it's a numbing sensation or whatnot, not sensation, but you get what I'm saying, even if it numbs the pain a little bit, it's got to mess with your motor skills, right? So, I mean, is it a chance that he would have been even sharper, more keen, not on cocaine? I don't know, Spade, because, you know, I think cocaine, cocaine is an upper. Like, it's a drug that makes you, nah, 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 you know, hyper. You know, it's not weed. Weed kind of mellows you down and, you know, makes you drag, you know. Cocaine is an upper, so I would think he yeah. would have more energy. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I see what you're saying. I, I don't know whether or not it does or it doesn't. I was just shocked to hear this. Me too, With man. no it's question of whether or not he loses the belt or, or do you throw out the results. Of the, that was never questioned. They just was like, yeah. oh, yeah, John Jones put himself in rehab for cocaine. That's and in other news, point. and I was like, whoa, whoa, wait, for cocaine? What about the fight? What about the belt? You know what I'm saying? I want to know what's going on. That's a good point. Nobody never. With Dana White, where you at, Dana White? You run MMA. Dana. Where you at? You, you are, Dana said you know it's cocaine. I, Man, the funny I don't thing know, is, I don't know the what to say is, about I that. Didn't even, the funny thing is, I didn't even think about that until you just said that right now. I I didn't even say what happens to the belt. You are absolutely right. That's a that's a great question. Like did John I mean, Jones keep the belt? Has there been a has there been a statement from from Comia? Because I would be like, whoa, no wonder. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, know I me. Need to check, I, I'll be looking for an I excuse need to anyway. Jay. That's right. I need to check Daniel Comia's Twitter. Let me see if he if he said something. But yeah. you you are absolutely right. Cause I I'll be like, man, that's that should automatically make me the champ. <laughs> you know what I mean? That should automatically make me the champ. But you are absolutely right. I don't think I will nobody said anything it on, about the belt. You know, I would really pile it on, bro. I would be like, in one time when I punched him, a white substance like a like a smoke cloud <laughs> came. Yeah, I would I would be piling it on. But yeah, for that's real, just me. But well, man, let's for move real. ahead, it, man. Let's let's do our strong arm performance of the week. You want to go first? Um, yeah, I go first. So my strong arm performer of the week with the Dallas Cowboys. Going out there getting a win last week. So the my norm. strong going performer my <laughs> my strong going performer of the week definitely goes to Terrence Williams of the Dallas Cowboys wide receiver. He had three catches for 92 yards with two touchdowns and a and the last touchdown came at probably the what eight minute mark to win the game. It was clutch. Put us ahead. Yeah, it was clutch to put us ahead. So Terrence Williams. You are my strong arm performer of the week. Thank you for that victory, homie. <laughs> well, yeah, man. Cowboys Nation loving that guy right now. Yeah, uh, definitely. I want to switch sports for mine. My strong arm performer okay. of the week. We're going to the NBA for this. 
and like this one might catch you off guard. We going to Charlotte for this. I want to get Kemba Walker, my strong arm performer oh, of the week. Oh, Kemba, good one. Kemba had a big week because I mean we say strong arm performer of the week, but we're really judging on like when we pick a big game. But Kemba mm-hmm. dropped over thirty twice this week. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He gave Boston thirty three five and five. In a win, mm. and if that ain't bad enough, in a tight game against the New Orleans Pelicans, he gave somebody 31-4-4, four, and four, including a game winner. Kemba is really becoming that guy that if he got the ball in his hands at the end of the game, you got to be afraid if you're on the other team. Kemba has made Wayne that Lyon. shot quite a few times. So, Kemba, Wayne you Lyon. are my strong arm. Perform all the way. De- definitely well-deserved because I did not see – Kimba being all this in the NBA. I mean, I seen it in college. He was amazing in college, but I really did not see Kimba being this, you know, during his career in the NBA. But other than that, well, it's been an amazing show this week. I want to thank my homie Spade always for dropping some new knowledge. Man, he kind of shocked me with some great points this week. I was feeling like I was winning the debate this week, but he kind of showed up this week. You know, Why your boy you feeling, feeling better. Like you went in the debate, bro. Like when I mean, you I ever always won the debate. I always win the debate, but today I want to say that you, you know, you bought your A game today. So I'm saying kudos. I'm, I'm giving you a compliment. I'll take that. Oh, okay then. You know what I mean? But it's been a, it's been an amazing show. We want to thank you guys for watching. Always, y'all know, subscribe. Definitely leave your comments and your thoughts of everything we talked about down here. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure we got want to have Twitter links and everything popping on the screen. Also. Everybody that we lost in the beginning of this year, man, you will be missed. Family, friends, Stuart Scott, everybody, man. Hashtag cancer sucks as usual. Spade has been an amazing show, man. Hey, wait, before we get out of here, man, I think you got some news that people will be glad to hear. Some people will be glad to hear. So, LaParis is working on making uh, Strong Arm Sports oh. available to you in other avenues. You want to tell oh, them what you're cooking oh, up? Oh, definitely, definitely. Right now, I have found out how to make Strong Arm Sports uh audio podcast on iTunes so we are working on that so if you guys be patient it is on the way it's yes, on the sir. way so I know I know a lot of you guys don't want to see our ugly mugs up here and you guys want to listen on your way to work and it's easier to do it through iTunes and other avenues so we are working on that so you guys have that to look forward to other than right, that, that's all I got bro and that's all I got too man it's been a great show we'll see y'all next episode peace Mmm, money team.